Sarah Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life. So today I want to talk to you about making paper clip dangles and I am right now obsessed with them and I'm super excited to talk with you guys because my family doesn't care. Um, I keep asking them to look at my paper clips and they they do but they don't they don't they don't feel it. So anyways I just wanted to show you how they look in my planner because I think a lot of times people will show you how to do something, but then they don't show you how it actually works in real life. So this one is on a little binder clip. And if you flip this up and you wanted it to hang down straight, you could just change the, the place on the page you have it. And that one is really good. I like the binder clips because they hold really well. And you could also, you know, use them to, to actually hold paper in on the other side, you see. This side you could have a little clip over here and those go around and these are going to flip around. Um, part of the fun is getting them all straight and the way they're supposed to be. And then this one, oh, this one's fun. Okay. So this one you could have on the side. Okay. And I put a secret word on all mine. So this one is, let's see what the secret word is. This secret word is move the world. And so you could do it this way with a paper clip, but again, you could put it on the top. And in that case, you want to move this around. So you can move it around the paper clip so you get it in the right place. So then it hangs down from that paper clip. And if I was going to have it coming down this way inside my book, I think I would get a smaller paper clip, right? You don't always have to use these big giant paper clips. If we wanted to swap this out for a, um, and I have little, I have a lot of paper clips. I have a little paper clip issue, to be honest with you. Um, okay, so you could put this on. And I'm going to show you how to make these, so don't be nervous. All right, so then, see, now that is much better. And you could have that in there. You could even tuck it in here. Oh, how fun. And then just have it come out whenever you want it to. Or like this one is, so all of them don't have to be grungy. This one's pretty and, and gold, and it's on a gold paper clip. And it's just a little bit of a, of a, just fun, you know? Just really, I have dangly stuff all over the place. Okay, so... Let's look at a few other ones before we get going. And I will have a blog post to go with this um, so that you can see all of them if you wanna see a picture of them. Okay, so here is another one. This one has a, these are called chandelier and these are from earrings, from vintage earrings. These are new beads and a new brad, vintage pin, Tim Holtz fabric, vintage book, vintage buttons. So I like to mix old and new things. I mean, I love vintage stuff, but especially with something like this that isn't going to stay in one of my books, I don't want, like, I just don't get too fussy about it. And I thought this one was beautiful. I just really needed to do something red. And I bought these really cool tags yesterday at Joann's that has this red at the top. And then there's a little stamp under there that's hard to see. That's from Covetable Curiosities on Etsy. And then this is a vintage, 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 old-fashioned flower that was in a um, sewing box I bought, and a vintage bead, and then a regular thing. And this secret message is follow your heart. So I love that. Okay. Then we have, oh, that's my favorite. Then I have a more, um, you know, a, just a plainer one that's just a little bit fancy. That's like the other one where you would just have a little clip on there and have a little dangle on there. It doesn't have a word. It only gets a word if it has a, uh, a bottom thing. And I think we've seen this one. All right. Oh, and this is my favorite one. So this one is super cool. This is my British one. And it has from a book, it says Cathedral, which I thought was creepy and a little vintage pin, and I love Britain. And this one says crook. <laughs> I love crook. Okay, so how do you make these? All right, so first, what I do is I start somewhere. Either I start with the beaded thing that I'm gonna use, or I start with a color. And yesterday I went to um, Joann's, and they had a super, super sale, and I bought a ton of fabric. You're gonna be so jealous, a ton of fabric. 
but I only bought a foot each. And so now I have a foot by 22 inches of all these different colors. They were only $2 each. So now all I use, honestly, is about two inches of it. So that pile will last me for years. So this is um, what's called a batik. Looks like tie-dye, sorry. Um, and then I collected a few, so I want purple, and then I found a little purple brad, and I was like, ooh, maybe I need something purple, because I don't have a purple one. And then I collected a few little pieces of ephemera, and the, the, the cool thing about paper clips is you just need the tiniest stuff, and you're gonna think to yourself, what can you possibly make with a paper clip? Um, and a little hanger and stuff like that, but you'll be amazed. So then the next thing I need is, hold on, I gotta get my box of charms out. So I have all of these from, um, from vintage earrings, and you can buy lots where they're not even matched because I don't ever match them, but they have all kinds of cool stuff. So this was a vintage cat. Sorry, something fell off there. A vintage cat, which I'm saving that for something super special. I have a vintage Grover. Um, I have all kinds of cool stuff, but I'm looking for something purple. So I think well, that's more, that could work. That's more brown than purple, though. I am sure in all my, oh, I think I see it right off the bat. In fact, I see two of them. I only need one. Okay. Oh, I had put this together for a different one. Perfect. Okay. Yay. When I put things together and then I don't use them, I didn't put this together, but I love that I would be able to just pop this in. So I don't always take things completely apart. And I was doing something, I think this is how purple got in my head. I was doing um, something else the other day and I didn't wind up using the purple and then it just got stuck there. I was probably making paper clips. Actually, I was making, um, a lot of times what I'll do is put a, a um, oh, I don't even have any of them out right now, is put a hole into an envelope and then hang something from it. And I was making a bunch of those yesterday too. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna reverse engineer this thing so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so these are called Gord paper clip, no, gourd safety pins. And they are my favorite thing in the world. So I want this to be on the back and then I want a colored bead and then a button, oh shoot. And I think this is a new button. That's a new button from my button that I got just at, you know, one of the big box stores. And then a light bead and then we're gonna close, I don't think I have something else. Close this up. Okay, so then we have kind of our dangly thing going and we're just gonna put this over to the side for a wee minute. Is it the right side out? It's the right side out. Okay, so now I wanna do my purple. And what you're gonna do is you wanna cut it and make sure that the ends of the paper clip stick out. And it doesn't count those little ratty things. I love having the extra strings. It looks like that's gonna work and I have a piece of paper that I was already using for glue and um, for glue and oh distressing okay so I'm gonna put Mod Podge on all of this because I kind of like to have the the cloth and everything be a little stiffer because I put those words on it so I don't want it to be really really um, Lucy goosey and you'll see, see later, I may want to punch through this cloth, which the Mod Podge does make it a teeny bit harder to punch through it, but, and then you just roll it up. Okay, so you roll, roll, roll. I may even have it too long. And then at the very end, what I'll do is I'll just take a bead of glue glue and put that on. And that will help it really, really stick. The rest of it's just kind of for show. Oh, let's get our strings, get our strings out because we don't want to glue them in. And then squish, squish, squish. Okay, so let's see how we're doing so far. 
So right now we have this, and this is probably going to hook on the bottom of this, because I usually put these guys at the top. You could put this at the bottom if you were doing, like if you didn't hide your words and you were doing a word hanger. Let's go ahead and put this on. See where we're at, and this is on the back. Okay, so we come up through here like this, and is that right way out? That's right way out. Okay, good. So we have that, but I need something to go on here. Now, I didn't do today yet any lace, which the lace can always be fun. And then this brad is longer than on some of those. Hold on, let me show you on some of these. Okay, this brad this tiny little brad that goes in the tiny little holes for the buttons literally is, you know, centimeters long, inches, fractions of an inch. But this guy is long. So even if we wanted to, um, we could do something super fun with this and not even glue down or only glue down part of this and leave this. Ooh, that sounds fun. Okay, so now we even need a littler piece. And can we do, can we use, oh, we can totally just use that. Okay, perfect. That's what makes it so hard for me to throw away scraps of lace because so often I uh, do something a little fun with them. So I just, I don't want this to be the bright, bright white. Okay. And then I'm doing a little bit of, what's that? something linen, antique linen, to kind of smooth out that the brown of that. Okay, good, so there we go. Oh, I also need to distress this cloth a little bit, because none of my stuff is bright. If you use bright, if you do bright, bright stuff, then you can leave yours bright. Mine's just always a little dark, a little faded. Oh, I'm gonna love that. Okay, so we want, we need real glue for this to stick. So we have that. We're gonna put our piece of lace on. Do we have a button or something we wanna put in there? Ooh, I don't have a button. Hang on, let me see if we can find a button. And you would think, I mean, like there is a lot of stuff on this one little tiny, I have that same kind of yellowish button, but I need one with a bigger, do you have any purple? I don't know if I have any purple buttons. What other colors do we have? Gold? I'm okay with that. Let's see if our if our thing will stick through those buttonholes though. Nope, they won't fit through there. We may have to go with a bigger button. See, they'll go through that one, right? So you always just have to check. Okay, so now we can put this through here. And then, so that's gonna stick on there. And then I'm gonna get my crocodile. Will it fit in there? Did it go through? Okay, that may not work. We may have to go through, darn it. We may have to use our little brads or not have that button, because I don't know how to, usually what I do is I just take my hat pin and I stick it through. But that is really, that is really tough. That, that fabric is super thick. I don't know that we're gonna get through that. Well, I might be able to get through the fabric. If we can get through the fabric, we'll do something. Okay, I think we're getting through. I think we're getting through. My hat pin is the, just the best, honestly. Here she goes. See, she's through. But I don't think we're going to be able to use that purple one. I think we're going to need to do a tiny, tiny, tiny. Do I have any out here? I don't think that'll fit through there. Oh, wait, it might fit before I shove it through. Let's see if it'll fit. Okay, go, go, go. Is it coming through? Oh, it came through. Yay. Okay, because see how there's just a little bit left on the back? But that's okay. 
That's okay, because all we have to have is enough to spread it out and catch it. Yay, that worked out perfect. And then we'll turn that, we'll keep that at the top. So look how pretty that is with that little bit of lace and that purple bead and our button. I think that's it. And then I just, um, oh, I don't have any here. Sorry to wiggle you. I just use um, little jump rings. I have some darker ones on order, but these are all gold. And you know what? People always wait to do things until they have the perfect thing. And I just don't wait. I just go ahead and do it. Let's put this on a paper clip. And I just go ahead and do it and get it done. And then if I wanted to go back sometime and fix the color of that jump ring, I could. Um, but honestly, once you see, it's like everything else you do. You, when you're in the minutia of it, you're like, oh my gosh, that looks horrible. But as soon as you get done and you look at it in its totality, nobody will even notice that. So hopefully that helps, Tara. Oh, subscribe to my channel if you like this. I do a lot of things about Etsy and a lot about um, paper crafts. Uh, or go to the blog post if you want to see pictures. Um, I will have a blog post of how to do this. So Hopefully that helps Tara Jacobson, Artsy Fartsy Life.